This is the Side Hustle Show with Nick Loper, episode 36, a job-killing membership business around your passion. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. And now your host, Nick Loper. Hey everybody, Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show. This is episode 36, a sub, a job-killing membership business around your passion. I'm joined by Melissa Whitmer from Ulti Results, U-E-U-L-T-Y, results.com, a site that's all about strength and conditioning for ultimate Frisbee players. There really is a niche for everything, right? I uh, was really looking forward to this chat. Uh, because I'm an amateur ultimate frisbee player myself, I think I've mentioned that on the show before, and and the fact that I'm usually pretty sore the next day, especially my legs. So maybe she'll give me some pointers on how to <laughs> how to prevent that. And once again, I owe a thank you to David Hutcherson from the Power of Part Time TV for the introduction. Good stuff. Uh, before we get into a couple reviews coming in all the way from Australia, Side Hustle Nation, man, is uh, is going global. I love it. This one says. Uh, five stars great stuff this is from c c dancic um learned so much about what i um wasn't doing with my business and she asks or he asks uh, can you do a podcast with someone who has had a successful kickstarter program and that sounds fascinating to me i don't know of any personal stories um, but if any of the listeners out there um have done uh, kickstarter themselves or have uh, or can connect me with somebody who has, I think that would make for uh, for an awesome conversation. And second one comes in from Spank18. Um, Spank18 says, uh, five stars, Nick is awesome. This podcast is a must-listen show uh, for those who want to take their game to the next level. It gives me food for thought each time I listen. Um, love the show. Keep it up. Thank you guys so much for that. Uh, like I said, these ones came in from Australia, so always great to see these coming in um, internationally. Um, but with that, let's get right into this call with uh, Melissa and see how she was able to turn her side hustle into her main hustle and, um, and do it around a topic that she, uh, that she loves. Melissa, welcome to the Side Hustle Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. So everybody, Melissa holds master de- master's degrees in kinesiology and chemistry and is an NSCA certified strength and conditioning specialist on top of being an ultimate frisbee player and coach coach with ultimate results at ultiresults.com, U-L-T-Y results.com. She's combined the two areas of expertise to build a pretty awesome business. So Melissa, let's, uh, let's rewind a little bit. Take me back. You're working full time. You're a chemistry professor, but your heart is on the ultimate frisbee field or, or do they, they say pitch? Um, so what, what do you do to get started in this? Uh, well, I was actually working part time as an adjunct professor. Um, and I enjoyed that for quite a while, but, um, and it just got to a point where there's not really anywhere to go from there. Um, there's not a lot of part time jobs available, uh, or sorry, not a lot of full time jobs available at community colleges, uh, or even at a lot of, a lot of, um, four year colleges are going to adjuncts. So, Okay. Um, and I didn't really want to do that full time anyway. So, um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I think I so, just sort of got to around the age of 30 or so and was looking for something a little more challenging, uh, something a little more uh, fulfilling or different. I don't know. Um, but when I'm kind of confused like that, I tend to go to the library and sort of like literally the library, not online. I go to actual books. And I just sort of watch and see what kind of things are interesting me at the moment. And, um, and I started reading a lot of business books. And okay. I think I read for almost a year before I really made any specific moves. Any particular books that, that stood out? I like this old school, going to the actual library. Yeah, yeah, there's something about walking down the aisles and just, I mean, it's just a good way to browse and just see what jumps out at you. But yeah, there were definitely some books that I really was drawn to, um, the whole uh, Jim Collins series of Good to Great and Built to Last. Uh, I did, those books really drew me in because um, I just like this idea that there's these fundamental principles that you can follow um, to create something of importance in the world. And uh, and it's not about 
I mean, obviously, I'm drawn to the idea of being a smart businesswoman and all that. But it's not about that. I mean, so, so much of it is about, you know, who you are as a, as a person and creating an organization that's worth existing. Um, that, I think, was pretty interesting to me. Yeah, some and of the higher level stuff. Organizations work, too. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty high level stuff. I mean, I've always loved the way organizations work. And I realized one of the things that made me most happy was coaching an Ultimate Frisbee team. And part of the thing that I liked was just, um, being aware of how we work together as a unit, being aware of the kind of thing that was created kind of between members, like the club and the team became something larger than the sum of its parts. And that's the kind of experience and the kind of things that really gets me excited. Okay. Now, I like that. Now, did you read any books on web development? Tell me, what was it like to get the site started? Did you have any idea what you were doing with, with the online world? No, I had absolutely no idea. So uh, the way I started my business, when I finally did start, um, I kind of had three rules. Uh, rule one was going to be about Ultimate Frisbee, um, and I wasn't going to do things for other sports. Rule two is I wasn't going to do clothing because there's already like five Ultimate Frisbee clothing companies. Uh, and so kind of a corollary, rule three it was going to be uh, providing some sort of coaching or educational service for the Ultimate community, helping players... Uh, to play better. Okay. Uh, and so, so there's the, oh, I guess, I guess really the third rule was, it seemed like a crazy idea. So I was going to give myself three years, work really hard and either figure it out or give up on it. And then. Okay. So you really took things. kind of the long term view for this, where I think a lot of people get into business online and maybe it's the, the get rich quick gurus and stuff with their Ferraris and, and the long form sales letters that say, Hey, you know, you're buy my program and you're going to be, you know, on the, on this yacht, um, tomorrow and stuff like that. So I think this three year outlook really was, um, was pretty good. Now, how, um, kind of, how did you go about building the site from, from scratch without that kind of background? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a really important point that you hit on there. I, I mean, I um, I think so many people start a business with, like, an idea of a product in mind, and then they try to buy, build a business around it, whereas I built the idea of having a business first and then looked for products that would, um, you know, well, be attractive to the people I wanted to help. Okay. So, um, so the online thing was just a tool, really. It wasn't the focus of my business. Um, and so anyway, how did I get started? So... <laughs> So my first website was just a static website that a friend of mine built for me. Um, and then eventually I realized, well, how do I get traffic to the website? Uh, well, the only free way to do that really is blogging. And I didn't have any money, so I needed to learn how to blog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I, so I started like an experimental blog um, just to learn how to blog. And I started blogging about my own training, um, my own fitness stuff, because that was just a lot easier to write about than the other stuff I had been writing about. And uh, then that blog became um, you know, pretty popular. I built up a small following and um, realized it was easy to talk about, realized that this is a topic that players really were interested in. And so as often happens, like the experiments that you do, just um, without really any intentionality, often they work out better than, uh, I think, your strategic plans. Like I wanted to do throwing clinics for college kids because – I was a good thrower and they weren't. So I thought like that seemed like obvious that they would want to, um, you know, buy that for me, but that's, that's not what happened. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So you started, you started blogging about your kind of fitness routines, um, and it's sport specific to ultimate frisbee. How, how many hours a week do you say you're working on the site at this time? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, I think, at first when I started, I tried to blog every day and then that wasn't sustainable. And then I think I dropped it down to, uh, I think I committed to three times a week okay. for a full year or, or maybe twice a week for a full year. And now you're talking up the site while you're at practices, while you're at tournaments. Like, How are people finding out about it or is it just starting to gain some some footing in, in the search results? Like if people are looking for... Um, well, I was really lucky in that at about the same time I started my blog, there was another... Um, blog, uh, more like an online magazine started called Sky Magazine. And, um, yeah, like I said, they started the same time I did. Um, I think I was answering some like strength training question on a forum somewhere. And, um, 
someone saw it and then introduced us and then basically I started writing for them somewhat regularly and then uh, um, so that was extraordinarily helpful in again just getting me writing regularly and out in front of people on a somewhat regular basis um, and then and, the other and the thing magazine that's nice is, about, is the magazine also in the ultimate frisbee niche Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Very cool. So they bring you on as kind of a, a part-time freelance uh, contributor. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so that helps build up the uh, – but, like, tell me about kind of the Ultimate Frisbee community. Like, it's pretty – it seems like a pretty small niche, but there's enough people in it to, to where you're, you know, gaining some some – maybe some readership, some notoriety, some position as, a, as someone who's seen as an expert in this field. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, in some ways, yeah, it was kind of difficult, but in some ways it wasn't. I mean, there wasn't really a lot to read online about Ultimate. I mean, blogs come and go, so sometimes there's just more people blogging than others, but up until this point, they've been mostly small personal blogs and people just writing kind of whenever they feel like it, uh, which is great. Um, so, I don't know, when, when someone is doing something interesting in the Ultimate community, people tend to find it because there's okay. not a lot of it. And then they tend to share it and tell others about it. The Ultimate Frisbee community is um, small, but it's pretty tight-knit. And you have people on teams, you have people going to tournaments, talking to other teams. Um, and so it doesn't take long for word to spread, I think. And so, you know, you can start um, building momentum if you're doing something that's interesting. People will talk about it. Gotcha. Now, did you start to uh, try and monetize the site uh, right away? And tell me about how... Like what was what was the first thing you put for sale, or did you do advertising first? How did it work? Um, yeah, let's see. I'm trying to think. I think the first things that I really did to generate any income was I started doing some online uh, kind of training programs or consulting for teams, just using like Google Docs. I would make um, some training programs, and uh, I think that was really the first thing I started with. And I think I had like two or three customers, and I. I tried having a um, like a, a clinic, uh, on-site clinic for coaches, so they could learn about strength and conditioning. And I think that first one I did, I had like one coach. Uh, so you know, I started off basically with four customers. Uh, but from that, I learned. Well, Got to start I mean, somewhere. Got to start somewhere. I love it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, well, so exactly. The... I mean, I think that's the thing. Just finding customers as soon as you can, um, and uh, and then that helps you figure out kind of what. Um, what's good, like what's really helpful and things like that. So that's where I started. But the first real product I had was uh, an ebook, And I wouldn't say, shouldn't say real product, but the first like mass market product was an ebook, And then shortly thereafter, actually no, shortly before I launched um, the membership website, which is now what pretty much 85 to 90 percent of my income is a membership website where people can sign up as individuals for my training programs. Um, and that's been going extraordinarily well. It was what the community wanted, and um, yeah, it's been really success- successful and is growing. Okay, um, they were they were they were lukewarm on the on-site coaching, but the digital membership subscription model um, is working much better. But let's start back. So, how long have you been blogging when you first released the very first training program, the Google Docs thing? Um, that's a good question. I I mean maybe. Uh, maybe about six months or so. I think those clients I got more from personal interactions, going to tournaments and emailing people, um, you know, that kind of one-to-one sort of stuff. Um, then by the time I got around to building a membership website, then I had um, more, uh, I mean, that was mostly from online uh, reputation and, and okay. just being known in, in general. And what's the, what are the traffic numbers like at this point where it, when you're launching this stuff? when you're launching the membership site, for example? Uh, good question. So I think that, you know what, I have no idea, really. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think it was really the traffic to the blog that was so important as, um, well, I followed a lot of Dan Himmel's advice from Endurance Nation and Marathon Nation, and uh, what he recommended was uh, basically getting a wait list of people that were interested in signing up so that I would have some sort of idea uh, whether or not it would be successful before I even started building it. And that's what I did. And so, uh, and honestly, I, I did not think that, um, that that many people would be interested. I didn't think it would work at all. But I put up a blog post just kind of describing what I thought a membership website might look like. Um, 
and all that stuff. Uh, basically okay. what it was. And within the first weekend, I had over 100 people saying that, yes, they were at least interested in having more information about this thing, you know, as it developed. Uh, wow. And then it became available. Yeah. So then when I saw that, it's like, well, okay. Um, <laughs> like, clearly there's some people are kind of excited about it. And so I guess I got to build it. And so that's when I started um, building it. And then I was talking with those people on that email list, just being in constant communication with them uh, and knowing they were excited about it because they were replying to my emails or filling out surveys or um, visiting blog posts or doing things that I told them to do. Uh, it was clear that, that that group of people on that list were pretty engaged and pretty excited about what was coming. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. So put up a, put up the blog post, say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about building. What do you guys think? Um, you know, did you ask for email opt in at that time? Like, hey, if you're interested, sign up here and you'll be the first to know about it kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you'd be the first to know about it. And um, I'm not even sure what what I told them at that time. Um, <laughs> I think once I had the email list and was building it, I told them that if they would be the first to sign up. They would get to sign up for a discounted rate and then the price would be raised after that. Okay. Um, I think that's probably what I started telling the list after I talked to them. So now let's get into building this, you know, the walled garden of the of the membership site, so to say. Um, how long does that take to create? What do you put inside of it? I guess how you know what kind of tools and software are you using? Let's let's kind of break this down. Uh, yeah, so that was kind of terrifying because like I really had no idea. <laughs> um, you know, I'd gotten kind of comfortable with WordPress or my blog, but not that comfortable. Like I didn't know anything about shopping carts and all that stuff. Um, Luckily, uh, I guess uh, Kajabi is a platform that became available at about almost exactly the same time that I was thinking of, of building this thing. And so um, so I went ahead and used that. I knew that I would at least have enough, um, sell enough memberships to cover the cost. I knew I would lose money. Okay. Um, this is but, a service yeah. that was mentioned a couple episodes ago. Um, it's K-A-J-A-V-I, I believe. Yeah, Kajabi, K K A J A B I. Oh, A B I. Okay, and it's it's a hundred bucks. One time, yeah, it's like one time fee or yep. ongoing. No, nope, per month, per month. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think it works really well for um, uh, it, it works really well for a membership website because I knew I would have monthly income coming in, and uh, so that it was fine for that kind of cash flow situation. Okay, cool. Uh, does okay. it is it a WordPress plugin? Can does it kind of like overlay on your existing domain? Uh, you can use your own domain name, but it itself is like a self-contained website, so it's hosted with them, and um, like uh, yeah, so pretty much they take take care of the hosting and all that. You can integrate your shopping cart and your email um, stuff with them, and. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's not it's not um, it's not connected to WordPress at all. So it's not a WordPress plugin. Okay, gotcha. It's more like a service. Okay, and so what what do you do? Like, what, so people sign up. Like, is there are you pre-populating the site with some some courses or some training material? What are you? What's behind the the paywall? I guess. So what people are getting uh, is. They're, they're getting strength and conditioning programs, and they're getting them, like, um, periodized for, um, basically, the, the whole kind of thing is, like, we're doing off-season training. So it's not like, um, you know, a 90-day workout thing that they do. It's, uh, a, it's a serious strength and conditioning program. Um, and the, I guess the thing that makes it different maybe than what uh, people had access to before is, well, it was built with Ultimate in mind. Um, it's also just built with athletic performance in mind, whereas... Um, a lot of players kind of get stuck on general fitness programs. Uh, they can only take you so far. It's not really going to improve your speed and your vertical jumping and things like that, which is what you really um, want if you're a serious ultimate player. Okay. Very cool. Now, how many people are, are on board with the membership site now? So currently I have uh, somewhere around 300 members. Wow. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, now is there like yeah. a, is there like a forum in there? Like are people talking trash? Like do they know each other like from different tournaments, um, or are they like just online buddies? Uh, no, it's gr it's great. So yeah, there there are forums in there. And then this past year, I started a um, a private Facebook group, um, which has been great. And uh, yeah, so it's it's always fun when people join and then they find other people that they know. 
um, the forum is not really the best place to do that. Like the Facebook group has made that a little bit easier for people to find people they know. Okay. And then it's becoming more common for people to sign up with training partners or with their teammates and stuff. And, um, and what's cool, like I said about the ultimate community is it's pretty tight knit. So, um, it's always fun when, uh, I don't know, people recognize people from other countries that they played with at a tournament, you know, sometime ago. I don't know. And it's, that always is, is fun to me. Yeah, that's shoot, that's awesome. I'm, I mean, I'm excited. How much? What's the monthly charge for it? It's only fifteen dollars a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's a nice, that's a nice little business right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm really able to provide, uh, well, obviously, very reasonably cost service, um, and that that's uh, important for me too. I think it's, um, I just got a lot of, uh, you know, I've got a lot of college kids in there that don't have a ton of money to extra money to spend. So I'm really happy to be able to provide a service for uh, a really reasonable cost. Right. Now, with with membership sites, I've heard the kind of stickiness factor tends to fade after a few months. Do you have any strategies to kind of get people engaged and um, you know, kind of renewing month after month? Uh, well, I mean, they're on auto- an automatic uh, payment system, so unless they decide that they... They can cancel any time they want, but they have to take an action in order to cancel their membership. Um, although they can pay in one lump sum for nine months. But, okay. yeah, the stickiness factor has not been a problem. It's built into what the Ultimate Athlete Project is all about. It's meant to be, um, you know, take you from off-season to preseason to in-season. And so if a player joins, if they last through the first month and start training, they pretty much decided that they're training for the upcoming season, and so they will be in the website until their season is over. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and all the billing and everything is processed through with, with the Kajabi software. Uh, yeah, I have it integrated with just, just a PayPal, um, shopping cart system. So. Okay. No, that makes sense. Um, and kind of now as it's up and running, are you doing any marketing outreach for it? Like how, what's your time, uh, what's your time cost on it? Um, nowadays now that it's up and running well the first two years are definitely the most time intensive because i was um the first year i was basically creating the programs had to film all the video demos and do all that stuff the second year i kind of rewrote all the programs um to make them better um and this year i have kind of shifted to providing more educational content so i'm leaving the programs the same for this year and i'll probably revamp them maybe in a year or two, because it is a lot of work whenever you do that. There's so many PDF files and so many videos and so many things. Yeah, it makes but, sense if um, people, yeah, too. Yeah. What's that? Well, I was going to say, like, yeah, you, you're kind of under a little bit of pressure to keep adding new content if, you know, if people are continuing to pay, <laughs> want to pay for the same training as last year. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, show me something new this month. Yeah, yeah. So this year we're focusing a lot more on educational content. and uh, But I think people still... People still are staying around. I've had members that have been in from the very beginning yeah. uh, that lost like a $10 a month thing, and I don't think they're going to go anywhere for a while, um, at least as long as there's something in there that they uh, that they enjoy. And then, you know, the community building aspect has gotten better, too, uh, as we've added more members. Now there's um, 300 members, so there's a lot more people to talk to than when we had only 100 members. And so... That um, community aspect, people asking questions, me being able to answer questions, us being able to have discussions together, that's been really enhanced this past year with the adding of a lot more, um, with a lot more people. And so I think that makes it more valuable and more fun as well. Do you find it's kind of growing organically, word of mouth? Like how are, you know, how is the membership, um, you know, growing month, month after month? Like are you doing... I don't know, like guest posting or like uh, getting in front of more people in the in the ultimate community to to find uh, new members or new potential members. Uh, that's a really great question, and honestly, I mean, I wish I knew for certain. I mean, I have some theories, um, <laughs> but I, I think in some ways it's gotten to the point where it's definitely growing by word of mouth. Uh, and each time I reopen the website, uh, I only have it open at certain times of the year. Each time I reopen, I have new testimonials from different players or different high level players. Um, I also do travel and do some clinics. So I was in Colombia for two months and I was in Europe for two months. And so there I got to meet, um, players in person and just kind of like expose myself to different, um, pockets of the ultimate world. And I think, yeah, you're going uh, global. Back, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it is definitely an international sport. That's awesome. Um, and I still write, um, 
some blog posts and I mean, yeah, basically all that. It's kind of um, all, it all supports like my, my uh, physical appearances in places, my blogging and the word of mouth. Um, yeah, it's all pretty going, pretty going, well, sorry, it's all going pretty well and supporting uh, all the other activities. Yeah, that's awesome. Such a cool, such a cool business. Just, I never would have guessed there would be, um, you know, big enough community that's willing to spend money um, on a, on a service like this or, you know, on a niche like this, but that's like, it's just goes to show you there's an opportunity everywhere you look and, and sometimes even the places you wouldn't even think to look. So I think that's really, really cool. Now, Melissa, if you had to start, if you had to start over, like if you're starting from scratch today, what would you do differently for the site or for the business? I should say. Uh, that's a really good question. I think that's maybe the only question I'm not sure I, I have an answer for. I mean, I think <laughs> I did, uh, do a pretty good job of, um, I think you did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I did a good job of being open to what the community needs were and just kind of, yeah, I, I don't know. It was a combination of factors, taking action where I could. Obviously, there's some things maybe I could have done better. Um, I could probably have been better with marketing. Uh, I could have, I don't like use Twitter. I recently used Facebook ads and they were successful and fun. Um, but there's things like that. Like, I'm not the best marketer. But that's okay. Uh, I'm fine with growing slow and um, and growing by word of mouth is, I think, kind of the best. Uh, and so I'm pretty happy with how things are going. I think if there was one thing I could do differently, it might be um, it, it might be this. I uh, I guess last year I started a more general email list, um, and it's called 25 Ultimate Tips. And you can go to 25ultimatetips.com and sign up if you want to. I've been uh, receiving those. <laughs> excellent. And so, I mean, you've seen it. It's kind of like just informal, like two or three paragraph emails, just with whatever was on the top of my mind. And that's a setup as an autoresponder. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I have people that sign up and then I'm basically talking to them for three or four months without having to do uh, anything, really. Yeah. And that has been really actually pretty good. I set that up when I was traveling, when I was going to Columbia and going to Europe, because I wasn't blogging, actually. So I pretty much took a year off blogging and... Um, kind of wasn't in the public eye so much, but I think that email list really uh, kept me in the front of people's minds. Um, do you find and people... it's not really an email list I sell to, but it's just one that I talk to. Yeah. Do you find people converting from the from the email list? Like, can you add in, you know, oh by the way, the the membership is reopening for a limited time. Uh, you know, now's your chance to get in. Yeah, I do. I do that sometimes, and and I certainly have. Um, well, like I always have a wait list going for my Ultimate Athlete Project when it's not open. So there's certainly some emails in the autoresponder that reference the Ultimate Athlete Project because I talk about, you know, exercises that I use uh, in that. And so, so obviously there's mentions of some of the products that I have when it, when it makes sense. Okay. Um, and so, so, yeah, I guess I, I guess I haven't looked I haven't looked at the numbers, so I couldn't tell you, like, how many people from that list convert to buying things. I really don't know. Okay, gotcha. Well, very cool. Let's wrap things up with your number one tip for Side Hustle Nation. Oh, my. Number one tip. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I think maybe it comes back to what we talked about at the beginning. You know, keeping the bu business fundamentals in mind. It's not about having, like, some genius idea. And the Internet is not uh, – it, it's a tool. It itself is not a business model. So I think if you keep those things in mind, you'll have a lot – greater long-term success. So true. So true. Melissa, thank you so much for coming on the show, sharing all this stuff about how to build um, a membership site in a, in a pretty narrow niche, but something that you're obviously very passionate about. I think it was a really cool um, conversation. And like we mentioned before, it's all about the spirit of the game, the spirit of the business. Very cool stuff. Um, everybody, you need to go check out Ulti Results, U-L-T-Y, results.com see how it's done it looks good and sign up for 25 ultimate tips like if you, if some people listening happen to be ultimate frisbee, frisbee players um you should sign up for the uh, for the ultimate uh, frisbee tips i love it there it is remember the business fundamentals the internet is not a magic pill just a tool you can use um so one thing i forgot to ask melissa during the call was when she felt comfortable quitting her job when the business got to a point where she could give her notice and she explained she actually took the aggressive move of quitting too early she explained uh she was sitting there on a beautiful summer day at the community college grading exams and looking longingly out the window and saying to herself you know what this time next year i'm not going to be doing this in that 
is what lit the fire and the rest is history. So uh, check out the show notes for this episode at sidehustlenation.com slash episode 36. And if you have a minute, uh, leave a comment. If you're if you were going to build a membership site, what topic would you build it around? Let me know. And, um, and we'll see if we can uh, help each other out there. Um, so, hey, I spent a little bit of time playing with the uh, with the SideHustleNation.com site before New Media Expo. And if you um, if you haven't had a chance to check out the redesigned homepage yet, um, can you can you head over there? Uh, do me a favor and uh, and let me know what you think. I'm still making some tweaks to it, and but definitely will value uh, the the constructive criticism and feedback and stuff like that. Um, so that's it for the show. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Until next time, go out there and make something happen, and I'll see you next week in episode 37. Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 